Hey friends, uh, Pablo Guy, Royal Phoenix here, uh, just popping in to say hello. Um, I kind of want to talk about like uh, the recorded history of the tradition of powwow. Like Pennsylvania Dutch powwow is probably one of the most um, well-documented folk magic traditions here in the United States. I mean, we have everything going way back. So I have a collection of newspaper articles from they're spanning uh, the time period from 1949 to 1952 here in Pennsylvania. Um, but I want to share a couple of those, you know, a couple of those with you. So here is um, an old article about Dr. Eisbart. Dr. Eisbart is a folk song in Pennsylvania. Um, it's kind of old. It's kind of obscure. But the trend, the translation is I'm Dr. Eisbart cure of the old art I could do what the fairies do when the sign of the ram is seen I mean that's a very loose translation of that and I mean that's my own translation could be wrong <laughs> but it's basically um about this power here in Pennsylvania that uh you know was very well known back in the late 1800s early 1900s so anyway he became kind of a folk hero and that's a little song about him um couple of the, you know, some articles here. This would be common. Um, here we have in the Pennsylvania Dutchman from October 15th, 1951. Uh, some powwow remedies from Juniata County. Juniata County is just north of me. Um, my son and I spent a lot of time camping in that. County. Here's uh, an article from January 15th, 1952 about witches in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So witchcraft was seen as, you know, obviously the work of the devil. Um, how I was the good practice. Hexerai witchcraft was of the devil. So people mistrusted it. So here's another one. The status of witchcraft. In Pennsylvania and Dutch country today, and by today, this was February 15th, 1952. So, even back then, they you know they knew that witchcraft was kind of a bad thing. Um, here we have the legal account on Hexerai. Now, this was from an article from 1820, and it was republished in February of 1952, the legal account on Hexerai and how uh, the Reserves friend told him his wife would have been for Hex. He said he believed that there are witches. She was one. So this was about a man who was convinced that his wife was a hex, a witch, um, of like 200 years ago. Here we have from September 15th, 1950, about a, uh, a local Pennsylvania Dutch practitioner of magic. Look at that. He was known for drawing protective circles. Um, very interesting. And then here we have the Folklore Center. 1951, talking about how the Pennsylvania Dutch used uh, the moon, the lore of the moon in our um, planting and harvesting and even how our work. Um, there we go. Uh, articles about almanacs and herbs, herbal healing. This is from 1950 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, here's a famous powwow. This was written about May 1st, 1950. Lena of the Eagle's Head, a famous power. Now the the article is very unfavorable because the journalist at the time didn't believe in power. So it was kind of a nasty article, but it's a fantastic article. I mean, if you can get past the the naysaying, but she was a famous power at the time, and history has kind of almost forgotten her. Here we have the 
Pennsylvania Dutch, July 1st, 1951. This article is about in search of powwows. Um, they understand that this was a biblically, yeah, the Lord's Prayer, still holding the Bible. So this was like a biblical-based tradition of folk healing. Um, here we have in 1952, an article about a snake charmer. So using powwow to uh, fend off the poison of a snake. Here we are in, this is the Pennsylvania Dutchman from, I can't see when this is from, I think it's 1949. Yep, 1949. A hex, the devil, and a farmer about a witch, how they sold their soul to the devil, and how they attacked a local farmer. Uh, here we have the state of Montana hired a Pennsylvania Dutch dowser to find water, what they called a water smeller at the time. You know that Montana hires services a PA water smeller, so somebody who could help them find water. Um, that one here in the Pennsylvania Dutchman, they actually published like some Brock formulas. Look at that; they actually published those in the paper, uh, which I thought is interesting. Um, The following Brock formula is take your hand, rub it over three times in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and the cure for corns in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then there was another article in that same paper, a hex and a head of cabbage, how a witch used a head of cabbage to uh, cause the trouble that she was going to cause. And then finally, I wanted to show this uh, article I found about this man named French Jacob, who they weren't sure about his uh, nationality, but he was a peculiar person, and he basically was a powwower um, in Lycans Valley, Pennsylvania, and they dubbed him the Wizard of the Lycans Valley. So Pennsylvania has, like, all this really cool history documented, and that's important. Um, it's important because all these powers throughout history are well documented in both newspaper and magazine articles, and therefore they're part of the uh, historical record. Um, you know, they didn't publish books or anything back then. They just kind of did what they did, and they got their uh, notoriety by being like picked up by journalists and such, um, but also because they had a very good local reputation. So... Pennsylvania Dutch Powell is extremely well documented, probably better than any tradition in the United States. I can't think of a single tradition in the United States that is as well documented as Powell. Maybe secondly might be Hoodoo, but Hoodoo actually um, incorporates a lot of what the Powells did. So I would say Powell is probably the first and most well documented tradition. Um, and its Christian roots are very well like ingrained in our history and such. So uh, if you're lucky enough, like I am, to have access to like historical records and such, hang on to that stuff. It's really important um, and it helps preserve like our tradition's history. So anyway, I hope that was kind of interesting to you guys. If you have any questions about anything I like showed, please send me an email um, and maybe I can go into some more depth about each individual article. I have dozens and dozens of articles in old newspapers and such that I've collected over the years. Uh, you know, it proves the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the history of our tradition, the Christianity of our tradition, and the, 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 the fact that we're so well documented. Um, you know, there should be no doubt or question about what Palo was historically and what it is in present day. So that's it. Um, 
We'll talk again soon. God bless you guys. Love you. And let's keep in touch.